Hi out there, this is Cynthia Howard, and welcome to my show. Today is Saturday, October 12th, 2019, and this is Freedom Cast, and I'm glad you could join me. It's Columbus Day weekend, and I hope you're having a good weekend. The weather is certainly supposed to be warm out there, so go out and enjoy it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, did you know we are being herded like cattle into the global financial networks, and we're accepting it as a norm? But most of us, we're not aware of it because we go about our daily lives not really thinking about it, but it does happen every time you use a plastic payment card, such as your debit card, or if you use any other auto payment system, such as an auto clearinghouse payment, a gift card, online debit, or other transactions, electronic fund transfers, online banking, bill pay, PayPal, Android or Apple Pay apps, even the U.S. Treasury checks are going paperless under the Obama 2013 rule change that converts paper checks to plastic or direct deposit by the year 2023. It even includes your tax refund checks. Everything that the government is taking care of financially is to be converted into plastic or auto deposit. And the future doesn't look much better because we're going to have digital currency, social media currency on social media networks, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, and it's going to get worse and worse as we go along. And we're becoming more and more an age without cash. And the global globalists want this. The mega banks, the central banks, the Federal Reserve, the International Monetary Bank, the Rockefeller Foundation, the Carnegie Foundation, Microsoft, all of these groups want cash to be left behind and they want to control you. And it was in the early 1990s with the introduction of Visa and MasterCard logos on the debit cards for payment and payment processing that coincided with the blueprint for the 21st century known as sustainability, known as Agenda 21, or now as Agenda 2030, which was signed by George Bush, the first Bush, along with several other countries in 1992 in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. The mission was to radically change our everyday lives and to control us in every aspect, all for reducing the carbon footprint and saving the planet, but really it's all about control. Whether it's transportation control, whether it's cash control, whether it's technology control, whether it's about public transportation control, it's all about changing your habits to conform to what they want to change the planet and to save the planet. And by adding Visa and MasterCard, you can use your debit card at almost any point of sale transaction, such as any merchant that accepts a credit card. They have a processing point of sale where you insert your card and you can use it there. And what they're doing is they're creating micro banks, mini banks. In other words, when you use your card, you can also opt to get money back as if you were at a bank. So instead of going to the bank, you can do all the transactions right at the merchant after you purchase your item. The globalist propaganda is forcing us to use these plastic payment systems. And they say it's all about saving the environment, saving the trees. But plastic is counterproductive. So it's all a lie. It's all a farce. Because oil is used in the production of plastic, and these cards are made of plastic as well as the processors. So it's a joke that they're putting on us. There are always globalists out there that tell us, well, these debit cards are so much better because you don't have to carry checks, you don't have to lose the checks, you don't have to take the time to fill them out, and you don't have to wait for them to clear. You will get everything immediately. In other words, it's easy, it's fast and convenient, they tell you, to use your card. Everybody does, so why don't you? And everybody is doing it. In fact, we have 
around approximately 34 million people on the debit card MasterCard Visa network as of as we speak. Pretty big. It's a pretty huge network. The downsides to this, it's making all of us lazy. We have no thought processes in writing checks and the person on the other side of the counter, the cashier, doesn't have to verify ID because it's all in the little plastic card. She doesn't or he doesn't have to count coin or cash. So they have less work to do. But this is being a disservice to the younger generation who will be under use, utilizing their financial and math skills. The use of these plastic cards is molding us into a robot. Just think of it, the robotic movements that you use with these cards. You slide them, you swipe them, you push them, you pull them. But there's a downsize. There's always a chance of hacking because you're on this million, 34 million people network. It can be exposed. It can be easily hacked into it, contrary to what they may tell you. It's an invasion of your privacy because it's open and accessible. Also, the warrantless searches of the Fourth Amendment, because under the Patriot Act of 2001, authorities have the right they can access financial records if they deem any suspicious activity. It may not be you, but someone that you're dealing with, and therefore they can look into your financial records as well as the chip reader. The chip reader has all your financial and personal information in it. So if you have a card, which most certainly probably do, because those are all the new cards, and those little chips hold everything. You'd be surprised what they do hold. And it's totally an invasion of your privacy. And it's unconstitutional as well. Debit cards also create a permanent record, unlike cash. Anyone can locate the information. It's done on purpose so that they can control you and then they can police you as well. So you're being watched all over the place, all over the world. It, to a dollar transaction or thousands of dollars in transactions. Thousands of people on the network access your financial network versus a check that you would write, which goes to one person it's deposited in their bank or cashed at their bank and cleared by your bank. So approximately maybe four people handle the transaction plus or minus the bookkeeping department. So you're talking about less than 100 people that are seeing your financial data with a check in comparison to a debit card, which may have millions of people on the world financial network. It's very small in comparison. Checks do cost fees, so that's not another reason you may not want to write them, where debit cards are usually free through your local bank. Now, savings accounts generate little interest, and this is being done on purpose as well, but banks usually reward you for using your debit card. So you're making money by spending, and by saving, you're not generating any income. Totally done on purpose with creating a culture of spending rather than a culture of savings. So there's no reason for you to save your money in the bank, but there is a reason for you to put your money in the bank to spend it because you'll be rewarded. So it's about time that everyone think about all these things. Defy these globalists, defy these corporations, get off the financial merry-go-round and counter what they are doing. Write a check. Use cash. Go to your ATM. Get the cash if you don't have it on you. Control your own destiny because right now you are sacrificing your freedom for just a little convenience and it's not worth it in the least. There are massive numbers out there of debit cards that can be stolen or can be exchanged or can be counterfeited too. That's another thing. They, they can be easily counterfeited by someone who has a setup or a processing machine and hack your information and transfer it somewhere else. 
So you should be aware of that. Every time you make the transaction, maybe you should know exactly to whom you are making the transaction and not just randomly do it wherever you stop. Because there's always a chance of getting hacked. They may tell you otherwise, but nothing is protected. There's always a way to cut through. And there's a lot of hackers out there. Now, in the future, will cash be obsolete and unacceptable? This is my worry. This is my concern. Will it be a requirement to have a plastic payment card even to the point of making a deposit in the bank? Not just for payments, but making the actual deposit. And will it also be a requirement if you buy groceries? Just a very few things. Will it be a requirement to use a plastic card to enter the grocery store or to enter the bank? And I know in some ATM locations they do that now. But I mean, will it be a mandated thing to do through the government? Will they require us to do this? That is very scary to see a world of plastic with no cash whatsoever and to be forced into this plastic card use against your will because the globalists want it that way. The big banks want it that way. Well, now you know what's going on. You know what's happening, and it's happening right before your eyes, and you're part of it, and you don't realize it, but now you know what it's all about. Thank you for listening to my show today. I would also like to do an update on the past show I did on genderism. Well, the Trump campaign has been placing ads on Facebook for women for Trump, and Facebook has taken them down because they say it's a violation of their policy because it specifies a gender, and they have a gender policy. Well, who's to say that's true because... Someone else could have a men's group for Trump, or they could have children for Trump, or they could have transsexuals for Trump, or LGBTQ for Trump. So by them pinpointing women for Trump, it's very unfair, and it doesn't make any sense at all. It's just that trying to trying to stop President Trump in any way, shape, or form from advertising becoming the next president again, which he probably will be but they're going to do everything to stop him by uh, trying to cut off all his ads on Facebook. So Facebook is the one that's doing this. But I don't see what their problem is. They're getting paid a lot of money for putting the ads out there. They're just using that as an excuse to stop him. And then on the other front, A lot of the state legislatures throughout the country are updating their policies, passing into law that they add gender identity to the discrimination regulations and RSAs in the state legislature. So it's being passed down on to the local cities and towns who have to update their ordinances and policies to bring them into compliance with what the state is requiring. But this is being done through, again, through the UN along with their cohorts, the human rights campaign, which is spending millions of dollars with lobbyists to make sure that it's being put into the policies because we can't leave anyone who is a different gender out in the cold now, can we? Because it's not fair. I'm being sarcastic here, but I think it's gone a step beyond what it needs to go. People for the most part in these policies already have sexual orientation that you can't discriminate against and that should cover everything. We don't have to keep pinpointing every little reason for discrimination and that's what all these organizations such as the UN and the Human Rights Campaign wants us to do and they're spending enough money so that they can coerce the legislatures to do this by waving dollars and money in front of them, but it's all in the name of discrimination, and which is un- not true at all. It's entirely untrue. But that's what's happening. We have to adopt policies at the local level, which happened in my city, at, city and town the other night in Claremont, New Hampshire, as well as throughout the state of New Hampshire and in other states across the country to keep up with the Joneses, to keep up with what the human rights campaign and the UN wants us to do. And 
it's all about controlling us. And mainly it's about controlling the population because if we have multi-genders, people that have sex change operations, there won't be children, and that's what they want. They want to limit the population just like they did in China, and that's part of the New World Order, just like the sustainability is, and just like how they want us to control what we do with our vehicles, with our house, with what energy we use, how much food we eat. AOC's got her trillion dollar scam going on about the Green New Deal. That's all part of the picture. And we have to put our foot down and speak out against it and continue to lobby ourselves to have this have these items removed from policies and fight it every way, shape, or form that we can. So again, this is Cynthia Howard, and I thank you for listening to the broadcast. And we will be having future broadcasts on other controversial subjects as we go along, and there's more things out there happening than meets the eye. And by the way, if you want to call Congress and stand for President Trump and tell him that they can't impeach him, they don't have the grounds, please call Congress. Please call Nancy Pelosi at 202-224-3121. That's the switchboard for Congress. 202-224-3121. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. And if you want to reach me, you can reach me at cindycoola09 at yahoo.com or 603-543-1372 or Cindy Tea Time on Twitter. Cynthia Howard on Facebook and LinkedIn, as well as on my YouTube channel. And my website is ccltgroup.webs.com. That's ccltgroup.webs.com. And give me a shout out. And if you're interested in another topic for the show, let me know. If you would like to come on the show, let me know. Or if you want to just chat and leave a message on one of my sites, I would appreciate the out I would appreciate whatever you would would like to chat about or whatever you would like to comment about. And I do have a lot we don't really have a funding source. We don't have a sponsor yet. We're still working on it. But please check out my site, Cindy's Antiques and Collectibles on Facebook, and you might see something that interests you and that will aid in continuing to keep these broadcasts on the air and hopefully we will speak with you soon thank you this is Cynthia Howard signing off and remember just remember there's always something in our lives that we have to fight and only an informed citizen such as yourself can push back and stop tyranny thank you